okay, I gotta be honest, I'm a little bit disappointed here, okay? Ever since that whole situation with Kaido having the mythical fish fish fruit model dragon, I was hoping, and I mean, I was really hoping that Yamato would have been the character to have the mythical duck zone, okay? I just want that to exist in One Piece, like, so badly. You don't even understand, right? And it doesn't even need to be the mythical duck zone, or even the ancient variety of the duck zone. By the way, have you ever seen a picture of an ancient duck? Don't worry about looking it up, I'll explain it. <clears throat> the Tyrannosaurus duck, 13 stories high, capable of breathing fire. It stomped around Eastern Asia all throughout the late Cretaceous period, devouring everything in its wake. It's honestly a good thing the meteor hit when it did, because otherwise we would not be here right now. The entire planet would just be ruled by giant ducks, okay? But even just like a regular duck zone, that's all I want before this story ends. Please, Oda, please. Like, the Straw Hats go to Elbaf after Wano, and they run into a kindly young giant, and he's like, uh, hello there, Straw Hats, my name's, uh, Bjorn. The giant! By the way, I ate the duck zone! I'll transform into a duck, hop on my back, and I'll give you a tour of Elbath. And there you go! That's all I would need, right? But anyway, in the last chapter of One Piece, chapter 1019, at the very end, spoiler alert, we got to see Yamato's hybrid form, okay? And while it does seem to be a mythical zone, uh, we do not know the name of it, and so that's what we're kind of here today, to look through some options in the review, and it seems like the most prevailing theory right now, the stuff I've seen the most of, is the Chiolin from Chinese mythology, or the Kirin, as it's stated in Japan, right? And so that's one option on the table, but there's a bunch of other ones, but suffice it to say, Yamato's hybrid form does not look very duck-like, so yeah. And I got really excited, too, because remember a few dozen chapters ago, the first hint we got that Yamato had a, had a zone was uh, when Yamato went up against Sasaki, and we got to see Yamato's, like, razor teeth, okay? And I was like, ooh, Yamato has razor teeth, okay, so that could mean dragon or mythical duck, because if you've ever seen the inside of a duck's bill. Um, they're not really teeth. Birds aren't capable of making an animal, but they're like serrated, okay? And they look pretty dangerous. So yeah, that, that could that could fit, right? Also, if you think this is freaky, you've never seen the inside of a goose's bill because, okay, I'm going to show you the image here, but it is, it is like an alien, okay? So yeah, that's not photoshopped. That's an actual like inside of a goose's mouth, okay? Penguins are also, they also have that with like the serration everywhere. It's kind of terrifying. Yeah, so there there you go. But anyway, the point is that Yamato has a mythical zone. We probably understand that much because Kaido mentioned that it was very, very hard to get his hands on it. And it also seemed to imply that Kaido did not want Yamato to consume the fruit. Because, you know, Kaido's like, I went through so much trouble to find that fruit and you just ate it out of nowhere. And Yamato was like, I ate it because I was hungry and no other reason, okay? So if not Yamato, who else was Kaido going to give the fruit to? So that's a question maybe for another day. Uh, but for right now, let's go through the options. So so first off, let me just, you know, recap the Chialin really quick. I have a website. It was very handy on reading up on the Chialin. I'll link it below, but there's some comparisons here between Kaido's dragon form and Yamato's mythical zone hybrid. A lot of people have noted this, so I just wanted to read through this really quick, okay? <clears throat> In general, the Chialin is said to have an equine-like body, either of a deer, an ox, or a horse, okay? So that kind of fits uh, Yamato's design right now, transforming into the hybrid form, right? Um, the body of the Chialin is also covered with scales of a fish so maybe tie back to the fish fish fruit there that we know that exists now they are often enveloped in fire and as for its head it's quite similar to the Chinese dragon all right so already you're getting some comparisons here uh, between dragons and chielins um, now sometimes the chielin is depicted with a single horn referred to as the Chinese unicorn other times multiple horns Yamato obviously has two so this makes sense this is fine um, and so although the chielin may be terrifying to behold legends describe it as a gentle gentle and peaceful creature. In Buddhist depictions of the creature, for instance, the Chiolin is shown to be walking on clouds. Remember when Yamato was explaining to Momonosuke and Shinobu about Kaido using his clouds to raise the entire island up and have it fly away? At the time, the way I interpreted that was the way Yamato was speaking about it was like Yamato also had the ability to manipulate clouds. Like, oh yeah, Kaido's able to do this and, you know, and I understand that because I'm also able to do this. That wasn't directly stated, but that's what I 
I kind of took away from it. And so if, uh, and also we see in the chapter, there's like mystical fire, or it could also be possibly clouds. It's kind of hard to tell in the manga. In the anime, it'll be a little bit more clear, but it's very possible that Yamato might be able to manipulate fire clouds the same as Kaido, all right? Um, then I also told that story about uh, the giraffes being taken from uh, Africa and being brought to ancient China during the Ming Dynasty, and then the emperor, you know, assumed that they were Chilin because nobody in ancient China has ever seen a giraffe before, and so that's why uh, Kirin is still the name for giraffe in Japan to this day, okay? And also some artistic interpretations of the Chilin back then have very long necks because they were basically taking giraffes and depicting them as mythical creatures, okay? Which they kind of are. Giraffes are pretty sweet, okay? So that's the Chilin or the Kirin. It's very possible that Yamato uh, could have that devil fruit. If it was that, I would assume the Ushi Ushi no Mi or the Ox Ox Fruit model Kirin, the mythical variant Kirin, all right? But there's a lot of other options here. I was reading through the comments and some other possibilities, so let's get into this. Um, the first one I want to debunk right away, and I can understand, by the way, when I first read the chapter, I thought this too, but immediately I had to shelve it for one very clear reason that this devil fruit already existed. But a lot of people, when they first read that chapter, I, you have to be honest here, you thought Yamato was a kitsune. Right? You thought Yamato had the power of the nine-tailed fox for a little bit because the comparisons there, especially with, like, Naruto and stuff, like, when Naruto transforms and stuff, is, like, it's kind of there. It's a little bit fox-like, the, the devil fruit transformation, right? And so, with the fire and everything coming off of Yamato, I thought, like, <gasps> Kitsune, but then I remembered, wait a second, pause... Katarina Davon of the Blackbeard Pirates is already revealed to have the mythical variant, um, the Kitsune, the nine-tailed fox fruit, and allows uh, her to transform at will, like transform into Absalom and other characters and everything, so it cannot be the Kitsune. Um, now, there's like variations of Kitsune, like, you know, creatures that look very similar, might have similar, you know, abilities, uh, especially between, like, Japanese mythology and Chinese mythology, you might have something else that, you know, Yamato could be, but I don't think is going to go that route with it. I think that, yes, Katarina Davon already has this mythical fruit, and so that, that can't be Yamato's fruit, all right? Some other options I've seen here uh, were uh, Amaterasu. So literally, Amaterasu, the sun deity of Japan, uh, Amaterasu, Sukuyomi, and Susano being the children of the creator deities of Japan, Izanagi and Izanami, okay? And Amaterasu is the goddess of the sun, and yes, normally depicted as a human, however, also depicted as various animals, uh, most notably a snake and also a dragon fox, referred to as a, let me see if I get this right, uh, Tatsugitsune, uh, or a Shinko, okay? So sometimes you could have this Shinko, like a fox-dragon hybrid, representing a Matarasu, okay? Now... With that situation, like, we're literally going, like, a uh, dog-dog fruit model Amaterasu or something like that. That's really cool. I gotta give it to you right there. I mean, and it's not even, like, gods or, like, superior deities are, like, unheard of in Devil Fruits because, like, Sengoku literally has the power to become the Buddha. So, yeah, it's literally the Hito Hito no Mi model Daibutsu, all right? So if Sengoku can become a giant golden Buddha, um, then an Amaterasu Devil Fruit could certainly exist as well, and it ties back to Kaido being so angry at Yamato, like, I looked all over for this rare devil fruit, and you just ate it out of nowhere, just because you were hungry, right? You know, and it could be a situation where we already know Logias are super rare, but mythical zones are even rarer than Logias, we found that out during Marine 4, I think it was Kizuru that said that, but then, in the mythical zone category, which is already pretty rare, let's say there are three devil fruits of mythical zones, uh, Amaterasu, Sukuyomi, the god of the moon, and then Susano, the god of storms, which are the absolute rarest devil fruits in the entire world. Like, so rare that they've never been cataloged in the devil fruit encyclopedia, and maybe so rare that they've never even had a user before, right? They're just talked about, like a legend. Like, legends say there is a sun god, a storm god, and a moon god devil fruit mythical zone out there somewhere in the world, but they've never had any users, nobody's ever had them before, or it could even be a thing where it's like actual gods have them and then gave them to the world, okay? And no human has yet to receive this power, okay? And then Kaido, using his connections as a Yonko, scoured the world and finally found it, like the literal rarest devil fruit, one of the three rarest ones that have never been seen before by mortal eyes. And then he brings it back to Onigashima, puts it up on a pedestal, like, I finally found it! Let's get drunk in celebration! And then Yamato's like, I'm hungry. 
<laughs> and then Kaido's like, no! You know, I'm not really sure what Kaido was planning on doing with the fruit otherwise, or who else, you know, was going to give it to, but still, very interesting to look at that, right? And yes, if Amaterasu, if we are going with that, even if it's like an animal form of Amaterasu that doesn't have, like, all the crazy powers as, like, an actual sun deity, also, we just mentioned Nika, the sun god, so that's something else that could maybe connect back to that. Um, even if it's just, like, an animal form of Amaterasu, like this Shinko, this Tatsugitsune fox dragon still would have insane powers that could rival or even surpass the mythical fish fruit model Seiryu that, that Kaido has. It might even be a situation where Yamato just could train more and then eventually reach a point where Yamato is stronger than Kaido. It's just not at this point yet. Kaido is stronger, right? Um, so that's what I think. You know, Yamato's not going to win this. Luffy's going to have to come back. Maybe they could fight together. That'll be really cool and all that stuff. Um, but yeah. And then when I thought about that, like, okay, if we're going to have three mythical devil fruits all representing like the most prominent gods in Japan like right under the creator deities themselves uh what if you go with dragon having the power of the susano devil fruit uh susano being the god of storms uh the youngest of the three siblings so maybe this could make sense with dragon being the leader of the revolutionary army having some sort of weather or storm fruit you know i assumed it was a logia or maybe a paramecia but perhaps it's a mythical zone, and the mythical zone model Susano. <sniffs> Boom. And then that's why Dragon is the most wanted man in the world, because he literally has one of the three, like, highest tier devil fruits in the entire world, in all of existence, okay? That's a possibility. And then you have Sukuyomi, the god of the moon. Well, we all know how I love the moon, so that could tie back in in a bunch of different ways, right? But, you know, the Amaterasu idea... I think it's a bit of a long shot because we're getting like, you know, really prominent deities involved here. But like I said, we kind of already did that with uh, Buddha. Uh, Buddha's not really a god in the same sense that Amaterasu was a god. Um, but still, that exists. So it's possible. It's very possible. And a lot of these uh, gods did have animal forms. Like, so that could work as well. Um, all right. So next up, uh, somebody sent me a link to the Kotobuki. I have never heard of this. But basically, it's what happens when you take all 12 uh, animals of the Chinese Zodiac, and then you lay down a polymerization card and fuse them all together. And so, it's a chimera, it's a new way, but a new way of every single member of the Chinese Zodiac fused together in one form, and this is an artist depiction of what it looks like. It's the head of a rat, the ears of a rabbit, you know, uh, the horns of an ox, and it just goes on and on. Um, is the cat included? Is Kyo included finally? I don't know! But anyway, that's what this is, and I didn't even know this existed. Like, I knew about the Chinese Zodiac and everything. I watched Jackie Chan Adventures growing up, but I never knew there was, like, a fusion, a chimera variation of all of of them together right so you know what if that's the case i could be all right with that basically you're you're essentially there you could just go the idea that um yamato possesses all of the powers of the talismans from jackie chan adventures yamato can levitate with the rooster talisman and can heal with the horse talisman and can turn into any animal with the monkey talisman shoot fire with the dragon talisman it just goes on and on and on wait is shen du was shen du a uh kotobuki then <laughs> i guess I guess he was! There you go! Alright, so, didn't know that existed. I think that's also a long shot there. Um, you know, I guess, you know, we've, we've kind of not really focused too much on the Chinese Zodiac in One Piece. Um, I think there was a cover page once where all of, like, you know, like, like, Luffy represented the monkey, Carrot represented the rabbit, I think Big Mom represented the boar, you know, Kaido was the dragon, obviously, and we got to see these different One Piece characters represent the Zodiac, but in, in terms of, like, the actual story, other than just maybe, like, you know, random references, we've never seen, like, a direct thing with, like, we're getting the Chinese Zodiac involved here now. Um, but that's a possibility so I'll go along with it there. So next we have beings referred to as Inugami, which are dog deities, okay? And I gotta be honest with you, researching these Inugami, because I've never heard of these either, uh, this was really dark and grisly at times, okay? So they originate from uh, Shikoku. Shikoku is located right here, okay? It's one of the four main islands. There's like 6,000 plus islands in the Japanese archipelago, but these are the four main ones, right, okay? And so apparently there were no foxes or kitsune on the island of Shikoku. So 
instead of having these kitsune like yokai like deities uh they instead had inugami like dog deities okay and it's actually really messed up because there were actually like a practice of performing curses like this wasn't in mythology like apparently this actually happened in japan at one point and there were even laws against this because what people would do would like cut off the heads of dogs and then bury them at a crossroads and the idea was every time somebody walked over the head of this dog it like built up this evil curse power to like curse their enemies or whatever and this was a thing that actually happened in japan there was like laws against it and stuff but anyway yeah so inugamis are like dog deities all right and so that kind of ties back to the kitsune thing kitsune being foxes it's just inugami were like a different variation because there were no foxes in that one region of japan so instead of uh, fox deities they had dog deities all right so inugami also possible there and then finally we have the last mythical being here and this one is i have to admit a lot more abstract it had me reading a lot more into the shinto religion and so it's not as simple as just saying that's an inari okami and then just calling it a day it's a little bit more complicated than that so kami in shinto you think that kami just instantly means god and that can be the case, but there's also a lot of caveats to that. Essentially, uh, Inari Okami is a combination of a bunch of different things. So obviously in Japanese mythology, you know, the idea of the land having, you know, a soul. The idea of, like, there being land spirits to, like, you know, for, like, crops and fertility and all that kind of stuff existed. So there's, like, a concept that an Inari Okami is a combination of a bunch of these things together. And that's what I mean by it gets kind of, like, you know, hard to grasp. But it can mean foxes, fertility, agriculture, prosperity, like all these concepts like together sort of represent what an Inari Okami is. All right. So the idea what I'm trying to get across here is that Yamato could very well possess the form of a fox, very much like the nine-tailed fox that Katarina Davon has, but is different in the respect of it's just the form of a fox. What's really more important is what Yamato or Yamato's devil fruit represents. So prosperity or, you know, the defeat of evil, in this case could be Kaido. Um, you know, uh, having the uh, the land of Wano return to its, its, its splendor because when Kaido showed up and with Orochi's factory, Masty forestation all the fields were ruined and everything pretty much just the flower capital is hospitable right now right so you could have that where yamato represents an inari okami to bring back the fertility to bring back the vast fields and farmlands and the forests of wano all right and just happens to look like a fox to represent an inari okami but there's more to it than that okay now how would that connect back to Yamato's abilities? Like, I'm an Inari Okami. I represent bringing prosperity to this land. I can also breathe fire. <laughs> you know? And, like, attack Kaido. Maybe, maybe. It's Oda. He, he literally had a Triceratops turn into a helicopter last chapter, so if he wants to roll with this, that's fine. But I'm just saying, the Inari Okami, it's a good idea. It also originated around 5th century Japan, and the important thing to bring up in 5th century Japan was, at that point, the, um, Tokyo Tokyo or Edo did not exist yet. It was Yamato that was the seat of power at that point. That was the city, that was the uh, the castle Yamato, which was the seat of power in that early stage of Japan around the 5th century. So Yamato, Yamato, hmm? So I think that's the reason a lot of people are, are pointing to the Inari Okami there. But anyway, yeah, those are some options. We got Chiolins, we got Amaterasu, the sun deity, uh, Kitsune's probably not the thing because that's already, you know, Katarina Davon's, uh, Kotobuki, Inari Okami, and Inugamis, okay? So if you have any other ideas on some other yokai or other deities in Japanese mythology or Chinese mythology that uh, Yamato's uh, devil fruit could be, uh, let me know in the comments down below. Um, but I always really like making videos about this, like diving into mythology and everything. It, it's a lot of fun. And of course, you know, Wano is all about, you know, Japanese mythology and stuff. Uh, and also, you know, just the idea that a lot of stuff like the Chiolin began in China, but then brought over to Japan, that could fit as well. Um, so it's possible that any one of these could be the case, okay? I'm still going to go with the Kirin right now, but we could have a situation where Yamato literally has the rarest devil fruit in existence that we know of, right? So we'll see where that goes. So thanks for watching, everybody. This will be Teching and Barry not signing out because we still got to do Ant Facts. Play that intro. Ant Facts. Yep. 
Okay, so this one is, we're going back to the army ants again, all right? But do not think that we're just rehashing things at this point. We talked about the army ants last time that were native to the Americas, uh, specifically uh, the Amazon rainforest, okay? And so we all know about our good friends, the army ants, with the giant heads and the giant mandibles and everything like that. I'll just shred you to pieces if you happen to walk in their file. But there's also another genus that exists in Africa and Asia, all right? And so these are referred to as the driver ants or safari safari ants, okay? And I've had a lot, a lot of recommendations to talk about driver ants, okay? So very much like the army ants that we're familiar with, uh, they have kind of disproportional bodies. Their bodies themselves are very small, their heads are very large, and their mandibles are even larger. So very, very strong jaws. They travel in very long columns. They don't really have set colonies. Um, there's a structure to the column as well, where the smaller ants are more in the center of the column for foraging, and then the larger ants are on the sides uh, of the perimeter kind of working as sentries to protect against any predators that would attack from the sides. Although most would probably not even dare get close because the pheromones of these things, pretty much any other insect or spider species, even certain like birds and stuff, would probably stay clear of this because you get guamped by the army ants, you are going down. The uh, queens of the uh, army ants can lay up to over a million eggs per month, so propagating this, this large column of ants, okay? But the interesting thing that I wanted to mention about the driver ants, and I think the main reason a lot of people suggested them is because the bite reflex of these mandibles are so damn strong they're actually used as sutures in certain parts of the world so the indigenous tribes that live in africa if they ever get you know a uh, hurt or whatever and you know it's like a giant gaping wound okay and they're not near a hospital or everything and this is like even before like modern society like you know thousands of years ago what they would do is use the driver ants as sutures so you would literally take this ant giant wound on your arm and then use the ant to bite down like a staple like a surgical staple to close the wound and then you twist and rip the body off of the ant so it's just the head but the reflex is so damn powerful it stays that way for maybe days without finally loosening up and then you could do it again and then you know eventually the wound is healed or you die of a crippling infection but either way that's really fascinating that it's like a primitive form of like surgical staples okay and if you ever get bit by one of these things by accident they the force is so strong if you actually try to pick these things off of you you might actually rip the ant in half before you actually get the pincers to let go of you all right so the only way to get these things off you without it like like detaching or whatever is you might actually have to like take a knife and maybe cut off part of your skin it's like yeah um but those are the driver ants or the safari ants if you happen to be walking through the middle of africa or i think it's mostly central eastern africa or in the regions of asia where these exist and you see a column of these driver ants turn and walk in the opposite direction you don't want to be part of that okay that's not a party that you're invited to okay thanks for watching though everybody this has been another installment of ant facts have a good one teching and barry signing out